Wednesday is our sixth day of the retreat and this is the time for the Dhamma talk. Uh, so far we have covered fifth talks and today is the sixth talk. And throughout the series we have taken the Sedaka Sutta, the particular Sutta you find in the Amrita Nikaya, the uh, basic theme. And uh, under that the Sutta, basically how to maintain the mindfulness, how to establish the mindfulness is the basic thing. So, specifically along this uh, establishment of mindfulness or so diligence, uh, so far we try to uh, handle this uh, restraint regarding the uh, morality and the restraint regarding the concentration training. And uh, now we are tackling the wisdom training or diligence towards the wisdom and they are also uh, uh, for the last, specifically for the last two days uh, we try to understand how to be uh, contemplative on the body or materiality uh, towards the wisdom and then how to be contemplative on the feelings uh, towards the wisdom. Uh, of course with that kind of a background or with that uh, kind of a mental framework. Uh, today we are trying to go forward how to be contemplative on the mind. And uh, <coughs> opening the uh, subject, the Buddha asking the question, Katancha Bhikkave Bhikkhu Chitte Chittanupasi Virati O monks, how such a uh, practitioner will upon the mind, on mind, in order to develop wisdom. Vida bhikkha ve bhikkhu sarāgangvā cittam sarāgangvā cittam ti pajānāti vītarāgangvā cittam vītarāgang cittam ti pajānāti And uh, under the topic of the mind, uh, Buddha uh, explaining under eight subcategories or subtopics. The first one is whenever there is a lustful mind, he understands himself or herself uh, that uh, this is the lustful mind. And whenever the mind is not lustful, he equally understand my mind is not lustful. So it appears to be a very direct statement, uh, <laughs> but under the light of the last two talks, or in other words, with the developed mindfulness and the concentration, this is an invitation, a uh, bold invitation to observe or to be diligent or be prepared to the lustful mind with the same mental attitude towards the non-lustful mind. So that is the, uh, the first and foremost thing that one can understand when you read it. Uh, out of these uh, two statements, whenever one want to be aware of the lustful mind, whenever the mind is lustful, and to equally understand the unlustful mind, whenever the mind is unlustful, uh, religious way or moralist point of view, the second part will be appreciated. Whenever the mind is not lustful, understanding that I am not lustful is a beautiful thing, religious thing, good thing, but find difficult to understand how to uh, be mindful, how to be diligent, how to be vigilant, uh, equal way with the equal attitude towards one's own lustful mind and one's very nose. So this is the a challenging one or radical kind of thing would the represent or explain to or try to explain uh, under the topic of the mind. So uh, this uh, this is the point I would like to say that we are cutting through the, uh, the moral values or the, or the traditional moral values or cutting through the religious values going to see the facts, going to see the bold facts as such. Uh, but anyway, this is not uh, such a really cutting through or in the, in the sense uh, despite thing of, this, there's no despitement of the morality. Whenever one going to see the lustful mind and the unlustful mind in the equal sense, that's a deep kind of uh, discipline, a deep kind of moral responsibility says it. That is the what, uh, very, very uh, important one to understand 
uh, I would say that uh, at the beginning or at the level of moral restrainment, it says uh, one must not uh, indulge uh, sexual misconduct or sexual, uh, or one has to appreciate celibacy. That is a kind of restrainment at the uh, moral level, and that is how we uh, make a peaceful society. But if it is uh, not possible, if it is not persistent, one has to develop the, the concentration level, the repulsivity of the body, and understand the disadvantages and the flaws of this uh, uh, desire or lust. One has to develop, uh, understand the, one has to contemplate on the repulsivity of the body parts and the corpses and kind of thing. It's the second kind of restrainment that is also falling within the religious values. But whenever it comes to say, to treat the sex, lustful mind as well as the unlustful mind in the equal way, that is somewhat radical, uh, very difficult to understand. But the day you understand it, you will, you will see, uh, you, uh, uh, you can map up, map down, or see the tapestry of your mind, how it is working, and how you be, be become slavery toward the lust, unless otherwise you never tackle, unless otherwise you tackle the root. In order to tackle the root, when and where the lust or desire arises, you have to, um, you have to face to face with it, without prejudgmental, <coughs> premeditated ideas. The lust is wrong or bad, and none, lack of lust, lust is good, that kind of thing you have to keep it away. When and where the lust arises, you have to see the beginning, the middle and the end of the lust. So that is, you can't do unless otherwise you have the pre-qualifications or preliminary adjustments like uh, restraint, uh, the moral restraint and the concentration restraint. So therefore, regarding the single subject of the lust or desire, three methods. First thing is that morally you make a vow uh, not to indulge sensuality or sexuality or sexual misconduct instead take the celibacy as a vow. Impossible. If, even if you find it is impossible to maintain, <coughs> impossible to have the integrity or continuity, then you have to do on and off uh, the particular sanya, silikul bhavana or development of the repulsivity or lossiness of your bodily part or disadvantages of the last. And that's the medium, the last one is the tackling the root cause. So without tackling the root cause, <coughs> both the others are temporary measures, uh, though it is falling under the religious values. If you are really wish to uh, tackle it at the root cause level, when and where the lust happens, when and where the desire arises, one has to be faced to page it. One has to see the beginning, the middle and the end of it. So this is a very serious task. It's a very great task. And that is why before coming to this uh, mental aspect or before contemplate on the mind, one has to be aware of the, the painful feeling and the pleasurable feeling. So they are untrained mind, always have a undermining tendency of desire whenever the pleasure arises, and undermining tendency of the trait of the head whenever the unpleasant feeling happens. If you manage to see this by fault, by fault method, the pleasurable feeling one thing, and its undermining tendency of the uh, desire is yet another thing, that is how you become qualified yourself to see the mind as such. If you have such an acquaintance or familiarity, uh, to see this uh, by folk way. The desire or pleasurable feeling is one thing. The desire to such a pleasurable feeling is something, a uh, tendency or undermining influx. Uh, the day you understand when and where the pleasurable feeling happens, with your contemplative mind or diligent mind and the mindfulness, that is how you go further advance to see the mind as a subject and see whenever the desire arises, lust arises, 
not to push it off, not to wipe it off, not to try to get it off. Instead, facing it, this is the beginning of the desire, this is the middle of the desire, this is the end of the desire. Even under such circumstances, well, yet another fact we have to be aware, that is to say, whenever you are to observe the desire, the desire has already mature enough, then only the untrained mind can detect the desire uh, discriminately from the head. But when you are observing again and again, you may get the chance, not only the already matured, already gross desire, you may, the, 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 the desirable mind, you may see how the desire start from the very mild pain and come up to this maturity. So, this understanding at the gross level and repetitive application of the mind when and where the desire arises to see its arising part is the task, is the responsibility, is the facility. Uh, you have to facilitate if it is, if when it is working, you will understand if you can nip it at the bud level, desire is not so destructive. So therefore, you must not develop any kind of hatred or any kind of a perverted idea whenever the desire arises to push it off, push it off, or to wipe it off. Instead to see it, the desire is uh, coming to the, uh, you know, to the activities free of charge again and again. When and where it happens, if you can uh, have a task, if you can have an exercise to see how we come up to this mature level, and uh, in this way, if you can see the developing desire, how we come uh, developing into the crossness, uh, that is what the word meaning of Yoniso Manasakara, that is what we call the radical reflection, uh, generally books, in the book plan may be translated as wise reflection. This wise reflection is uh, take the lust as a subject and when and where it happens without negligent. If you are diligent to see how it arising from within a subtle form and to come up to the uh, gross level and then beyond control it transgress, then you understand how dangerous it is. Instead, if you manage to see as and when the lust arises and when and where it arises, if you are diligent to see one thought moment before, one thought moment before, that is the way you go to its beginning. When it is going there, you can understand it become gross, it become uncontrollable due to your negligence. If you are diligent, you can tackle it at easy, uh, soft, or uh, developing position, there you can be picked up about. So therefore, negligent is the one make the matter worst, make the situation uncontrollable, and then uh, the worst thing is, uh, not only you understand that is your own, your, your own negligent, but instead you will see the outside factor, the visual object, sound, or anything, started the, this desire, or cause, is the is at fault, that your wrong decision coming, telling that I am pure, I am innocent, only this desire came and overwhelmed me, that is why I was so irrational at that time, I break my moral uh, conditions. But if you are to see the, the desire come and overwhelm, simply because of your negligence, if you are diligent to see its early part, definitely, you can tackle it and that uh, nothing to do it number of times. If you can see it only once, then you will understand the mechanism. Then you will understand how uh, these emotions are becoming destructive. At the early part, there is a destructive nature, but it is not at the translational level, unless otherwise you become negligent about that. And that negligence can happen due to phobia also. You may have no guts to see the, uh, the desire as desire, and instead if you try to push it off, the desire becomes hard and fast. Instead if you have the real 
boldness or diligence or vigilance to see at least a little bit, uh, small desires, small lusts, then you can't, you are uh, bound to see the mechanism how it happens and that will be the, the biggest experiment or biggest uh, research you do with your life, that is what the Buddha says, Arya Pariyasana, that is what you call this noble quest. For that, you have to tackle the desire red-handed, under your very nose, not the desire what happened to, what happened to you yesterday, or not the desire that is going to happen tomorrow, or not the desire happening in your neighbor. It is with your, under your very nose, they are both. The person who is ready with Kayanupasana, that is contemplative mind with the body, and the Vedranupasana, contemplative mind ready with the feelings, is the person qualified to face this uh, desire as such. And uh, I, I know and I have to admit, and I think it is everyone will accept this is a very uh, involved thing and very uh, grave. Uh, kind of experimenting and therefore uh, preparedness is very important. When and there you are not prepared, that means mind is not diligent, mind is not mindful, just you have to sympathize yourself, this is not the time. But still there is yet another way to make yourself boost up, or you are not the boosting of yourself, but I mean the mindfulness, that is to say, when and where you observe the mind without desire, you must make a point to be happy or glad. Now I am not lustful. That we do we never do it. We only regret, we only discourage and disappoint to say my mind is going beyond the control and transgressing, I am being desire. Desirous. But we fail to see when and their mind is not desire, not overwhelmed by the desire. So that is how we undermine our uh, positive qualities. We always give the negative marks, telling that whatever the meditation I do, whatever the repulsivity uh, I contemplate, whatever the precepts I try to observe, the desire or man or command or will be. But you fail to understand when and we are vitaragangma chitta, when the mind is without lust. We never appreciate. But when you are going to appreciate the mind without lust, you will say that time you are angry. You will be with the anger. Or you may you may with the, the irritation. That the way irritation also have a reason to be glad because it indicates mind is not lustful. And the lust also have a kind of a reason to be glad. At that time mind is not with angry. Mind is not in anger. It is not irritation. So this is the way you take this as a subject to understand rather than be disappointed. If you are not skillful, if you are not radical, if you are not wise, what can happen is you may be developing extraordinary kind of irritation at this level of meditation. Whatever thing happens, you go bald-headed and hit, and whenever you fail, you become so irritated because you are so self-concerned and your mind is very sharp, and therefore special kind of irritations can come up. The second thing is the fault-finding nature of the surrounding people also. It's a kind of a fever, a kind of a disease happening to successful yogis. The other one is disappointment. If I am to add the fourth character, following Gurdjieff's teaching, he says, you become pedantic. You are extraordinarily meticulous. You expect everything to happen in a perfect way. Whenever something goes wrong, you become irritated, fault finding, disappointed. So this is a very good sign that if you are in the correct perspective. That may be the reason at that time if you are in a monastery, you are lucky. Otherwise you are making so much of row at your house. 
at your workshop, at your working place, because your mind is now exploring into the new field. It is trying to be aware of the arising part of the lust, the arising part of the anger. But it has to happen in the very patient and slow-faced manner. But the, whenever the society or the surrounding people are not giving the chance, you attribute that as a mistake of your society, of your fellow beings, and you become irritated. Even in the meditation centers, uh, we have to be sympathetic with this kind of yogis. Only the advanced yogis can understand this kind of uh, yogis really, really working with these uh, mental factors or mind as such. That is why uh, they are, should have forests under the tree dwellings or meditation centers for you to <coughs> implement this experiment. Just like laboratories, uh, which you can control the atmosphere, you can control the temperature, you can control the atmospheric pressure and everything, that is the best place for the good sophisticated experiment. Likewise in the mind, this thing also, everything, that is to say, uh, that to improvise the proper forest or improvise the under the tree or solitude place, single factor is the solitude. If you are busy, if you are pressurized, uh, situation will not be conducive. Uh, specifically for the beginners on this subject. So therefore you have to have enormous sympathy for oneself and that may be the reason the Buddha, he said the person who is at the level of this understanding as the lust rises, this is my mind is with lust. Whenever the mind is without lust, he understands this is my mind is without lust. As he understands my mind is with anger, my mind is with anger. When there is a mind is without anger, he or she will understand verily, my mind is with anger. Sometimes you might the hazy mind, that is bewildered. Sometimes you understand my mind is very clear foresight. And sometimes mind is contracted, sometimes mind is desperate. These four have some relationship to the ethics. Because when you transgress it, you are violating the society. But if you are really keen to understand after uh, successfully following your material kind of meditation and the feelings and coming into this uh, mind aspect, more and more you understand it is very reciprocal thing even the rational mind can understand when you are mastering it you can understand why other people also behave like that. Whenever the, uh, your children or your subordinates or your parents or teachers or neighbors when they are behaving in a such an emotional way instead of finding fault with them and deciding they are uh, uh, deciding to punish them, you will understand they are also working under the same principle of uh, chitta niyam, the universal law of the mind. It is working in the unanimous way. Unless otherwise you understand your emotions on an experimental basis and then become master to tackle fairly uh, substantial amount of lust a substantial amount of anger, a substantial amount of bewilderment, a substantial amount of contraction and the dissipated situation, you always misappropriate in that you are being sucked up with that situation due to the outside world. Sir, does it work also on principles, the Chitra Yama? Yes. Like, thing, like physics? Is it yeah, also it is physics? a universal law, whether Buddha is becoming um, universal, the omniscient Buddha or not, this is a given fact, this is the date and life, but always individual we, individually we are thinking and making repercussions to this universal law, that is why the karmic process are coming to be. If you are working parallel with the universal line, no friction. There is no turmoil and there is no karmic process or any uh, something precipitating. No special law for uh, uh, lodged or uh, uh, arhat or something? 
That is no such a thing for the universal law. Universal law is something, if you know, you are safe. If you do not know, it is like the electricity. Electricity has no many mercy whether you male or female. Whether you are ordained or not, electricity is electricity. If it is 2.30, you get the 2.30 shock. If you get 11,000 or 33,000, according to you, get the shock. Electricity has no. Exactly like the universal law of all that is called Chitanyana. Without knowing that, we see, we know physics, we know chemistry, we know biology, and we are bragging and we are becoming uh, arrogant, thinking that it will save us. But all these partial knowledge is preventing you from understanding the universal law. Universal law comes only through here and now, only through my here and now I am situation, not other things. But once you uh, understand it, once you realize it, once you uh, expose to that, you understand that is the way the Buddha uh, became omniscient to see others' minds also, how to uh, sympathize others <coughs> rather than aggravating it, and he sees the real food course. And to uh, depict it, uh, to exemplify, the Buddha says, untrained mind is work like a dog mind, the trained mind is work like a lion's mind. So whenever you throw a stone to a dog, it will run behind the stone and bite it and be angry with the stone. But if you throw a stone to a lion, he will never, specializing on the stone, he will look back where it comes from. He will answer that once and for all finished. Not eating the, not biting the stone. So our mind is dog mind as far as not meditated, not diligent, not mindful. And that is to say you are not mastering, you have not mastered the radical reflection and see the root cause. As far as you are not seeing the root cause, uh, the ignorance work in the bifoc, bifoc way, simple unknowing and misperception. Simple unknowing you can reduce by seeing the arising desire again and again and to see to the root cause of it. And then you will understand if you are not see the root cause within, you should never, usual mind is always finding the fault with outside. That is the misperception. So, um, the ignorance is working in the bifold, double fold manner. So you have to tackle it knowing its complexity. Specifically with the basic emotions like uh, the desire, the hatred, the ignorance and the contracted mind, this kind of thing. So therefore, the moment you uh, really make you this opportunity that is called Shana Sampatti, you will understand being a human is a such a precious thing because when then where it happens, the Buddha has given the formula how to arrive at the beginning of it. For that, the lust has to happen. Otherwise, you can't do the experiment. The anger has to come. Otherwise, you can't do this experiment. The ignorance, the bewilderment has to happen. And this uh, contracted mind or dispersed mind, these are raw materials for your noble quest. But usually, you consider them as utter something. Yet, it is true as far as you are not the as far as you are not mindful, as far as you are not vigilant, as far as you are not prepared to make use this chance. So, still again I am emphasizing, this will become an opportunity, this will, you can make use this chance only if you are qualified with uh, the moral training, concentration training, and Kayanupasana and Vedanupasana. Then only this Chittanupasana, the contemplation of the mental aspect become your next task or next question paper or next challenge. So for that uh, you must have these basic qualifications and when you do, the now the results become electric. When and where you come to know the arising part of the desire, when and where you come to know the already arisen gross desire, when and there come to know the ceasing part of the desire, then and there you can understand. It's a, it's a 
important kind of knowledge, important kind of direct experience you have to do without prejudgmental, without reaction, without assuming, see the beginning, the see the middle, see the end of the desire. And the day you understand it is a possibility, you will appreciate how lucky that I, I was born in the Buddha dispensation. I was born as a human being and I have no kind of uh, disqualifications to carry out this experiment. Luckily we have instructions, luckily we have role models to do it and luckily we can live up to that livelihood. So these are the most important and crucial and decisive factors we have it. The moment they come into align with at each point you become elected. That's called Akalika. The time never matter. The moment you understand, you are the one to get the benefit. And of course by talking and listening and contemplating these things, you may get certain kind of exam uh, experience, theory knowledge and the deductive knowledge. But it's completely different as and when the lust arises, if you are elected, mindful to see the arising part of the lust and its consummation and its cessation, then you can understand as and when it arises, as a kind of uh, tendencies, undermining tendencies, going to take the upper hand if you are not there. Once it comes up to the peak, definitely it is over. Definitely it is about to transgress and there you are helpless, you become slave. More and more you to understand its arising part, you become the master, the, the desire becomes the slave. You can make you see. But once it comes up to a beyond the control level, then you become slave and you will be just uh, follow the pursuit of pleasure kind of game. And therefore uh, the difference between animal being or human being disappears. Everyone becomes emotional, everyone becomes pre I mean uh, the uh, program, robots, things will happen. But after that, it ceases to exist. That is also one part you can understand and the other thing could be the end result. But the day you come to know that and understand and check at the beginning or nipping at the bud level, you understand everything is within your control. All the facilities are with you, all the raw materials are with you, it is to prepare us. So therefore, when you come up to this uh, Chitte Chitta Anupasana, Chitte Chitta Anupasana we are the, uh, dwelling on the uh, mind, on mind, as far as the agency is concerned, it becomes very, uh, very profound. It's a very profound understanding uh, and uh, uh, employing of your all the faculties uh, based upon your early preliminary cross training. And when it goes further, uh, beyond these uh, ethical parts like uh, lustful mind, the angry mind, the bewildered mind, and this uh, contracted and uh, dissipated mind, the Buddha further goes there, he says, Mahagatarma Chitta, Mahagatarma Chitta. That means sometimes uh, such a trained mind, even through the Vipassana meditation, can go through jhanic experiences or uh, absorbed kind of experiences. They are called Mahagata Chitta. That means uh, uh, minds are not narrow, it's a very broad mind. And when that happens through your Samadha meditation or sometimes in the Vipassana meditation, usually you become happy, you become uh, proud. When you make goes off, Mahakatan Chitta, mind becomes narrow and you find you become regret. And without falling into that kind of a pride or disappointment, you can see this is just the two sides of the same coin. Then you, know, you can really master, you can really make use this Mahakata Chitta. And specifically in the Sapusa Sutta, that you find in the Vajjama the Buddha says, even if you achieve uh, 
जान के एक्सपीरियंस लाइक द फर्स्ट जान सेकंड जान थर्ड जान फोर्थ जान लाइक द मेटीरियलिस्टिक पार्ट इफ यू आर गोइंग टू कंसिडर दैट आई एम द ओनली पर्सन हैविंग जान द अदर पर्सन डज नॉट हैव दे आर फो ब्रैगिंग मन सेल्फ एंड लुकिंग डाउन अदर्स विद द इंफीरियोरिटी इफ दैट इज द केस He is not a noble person. He is not a spiritual person. That very jhanic experience work against him. But he, whoever may be, understanding yes, due to my correct effort, I could jhanic factors. The other person does not. But if I am going to have one upmanship or brag, that will become a, another kind of defilement arising out of this good heart, and it is going to undermine. Therefore, I must take care. So I must be humble and I must be open, not to develop that kind of arrogance. So I would say, even if you do have developed jhanic experiences and do not have this advice, this preparedness, uh, it can be, it can work in the negative. So that is why, under this training of this uh, mind, mind aspects. It says mahagatangma chitta, amahagatangma chitta, where the mind is very uh, narrow or very uh, great. You have to understand they are just mental factors or mental facets. They are reciprocal each other. With respect to the greatness only, the inferiority happens. Or narrowness happens. With respect to the narrowness only, the greatness happens. They are not <coughs> absolute. They are not. Uh, that is to say. केवल है, इन द सेंस दे आर रिलेटिव। कैन कैन अ पर्सन गेट एडिक्टेड टू जान? दैट इज़ दैट इज़ द डेन इफ यू आर नॉट प्रिपेयर इफ यू आर नॉट मास्टर इन लाइफ दैट जानी के एक्सपीरियंस कैन बी एडिक्टेड जस्ट लाइक अ ब्यूटीफुल पर्सन इज़ ऑलवेज ब्रैगिंग अबाउट इज़ ब्यूटी, ही सो ह It will become a burden. That is why the, in the society so much of envious and fighting and everything happened because the, the person who is who got this endowment did not know how to tackle. It. So how to, how to how to enjoy jhanic and then not be addicted? How to do that? So you have to consider the jhanic experience and the not jhanic experience are the same. They are not, they are not carried away. You know they are just mental aspect. They are just two coin, two sides of the same coin. So it is relative thing. So if it is so, you are the master. Otherwise, you become slave. And that is how Mahakatan Chitta, Amahakatan Chitta, and Sautran Chitta, Anutra Chitta. Sometimes you become fully desperate and you are suppressed and you are at the bottom of the all your moral. Sometimes you become on top of the world like completely elated mind. The Buddha says they are relative things. So whenever you become uh, on top of the world, you must not look down the other people, those who are having some tension and the depression and kind of thing. You also still succumb to that kind of situation. Whenever you are in the uh, such a depressed and uh, suppressed situation, you must understand mind is such a volatile thing. At a time, it can become. Completely happy and top of the world. So therefore, these two are not uh, stable, permanent states. They are changing each other. And whenever uh, you are suppressed or depressed, you have to understand the rest of the world is not so. They are happy and they are relaxed in the sense, relatively. You are suppressed. Sometimes you are very happy and elated. Others are. Appear to be full under the tension and the suffering. They are also not understand these things can be interchange each other. So therefore, you are not assuming, you are not reacting, you are not uh, <laughs> adamant, or bold, arrogant regarding this kind of thing. So that is also only a developed cultured human being can practice this kind of thing. So therefore. साउतरंग माचिता अनुतरंग माचिता डेट मीन्स दैट सप्रेस माइंड ओ अनसप्रेस माइंड यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस आर वर्टाइज सिचुएशन एंड समाहितांग माचिता ना समाहितांग माचिता एट टाइम माइंड बिकम वेरी नोटी 
Even if you wish to control, it never. Sometimes you feel, if I wish I can do, kind of a, a situation under control. So every time when you consider that your mind becomes unruly and up to mischief, sometimes you may sympathize it. But when your children become un- uh, the naughty and kind of thing, you, are, you take a stick and try to punch them. You have no rights because I am your father and the mother or something. I think in these countries you can't punish it. But in, in Sri Lanka we can. And uh, the, because they say these children must be really obedient and they must be listening to everything and all the kind of thing. But the day you become aware that even your very mind is not ruly, it is unruly sometimes. And it is, at the time it becomes very obedient, but not that all the time. So that, that is the way, whenever you appreciate it, when you are really observed to see it, when you go to a prison or when you go to a, any other place where the people that uh, punished are there, you never feel any superiority, inferiority complex. You understand this is the situation of untrained mind. Whenever the mind trains, it can be come up to this superior level and this basic potential to become superior still in the prisoner's mind, still in the criminal's mind. So therefore, uh, you may see positive ways to correct them rather than punishing them. And uh, I heard there's one story that uh, the, the saint called Golgotha. If I, I don't know, I am, I am going to relate a story that has been listened. And he has been a very, he has been a saint and everyone accepted. One day he is a traveler and he has gone to a particular church and that day the villagers got caught uh, culprit or maybe a prostitute, they are going to throw stones and kill it. And they got the fellow and tie into the horse and everyone is about to uh, throw stones and this culprit is screaming and shouting and shouting it becomes a big crowd. And the Golgotha is inside the house. No one knows. Ultimately he has opened the door and come and ask the people, what is going to happen? The people told, this is a, such a culprit. Oh, this man, this lady, this woman is a prostitute. The, we can't maintain the, the moral integrity. All the children and everything following the bad model, they are going, according to the rules of the Bible, we are going to throw stones and kill. The Gopata so that is very nice. The Bible is directly telling like that, but the first qualified person may throw, throw the stone. Whoever pure. No one is pure. Everyone is doing the same mistake, but when the culprit is caught up, everyone is ready to take the punishment. Golgotha is the only qualified person. He is pure, so he can understand how the people take the opportunity to suppress others without knowing one's own mind, one's own volatile nature of the mind. That is how we are deciding upon others. We have no rights, we have no executive powers to decide on the other person unless otherwise it is constructive, unless otherwise it is out of compassion. With that you can do, but anyone will accept, anyone will have to understand, you have to do not with the, with the muddy water, you have to wait till the water becomes settled, then only you can take the case. But when we are uh, forking our fingers into other affairs, we do it handed when the situation is agitated, so that is the, we ourselves falling into the uh, uncontrollable situation. Because of our lack of understanding regarding the mind, we are going to take the upper hand regarding the others, or I would say we are going to take the mean advantage of others' weaknesses. The moment you understand the Sautran Chitta Manutran Chitta, that our mind itself is not fully controlled. It is not under the restraint, under such circumstances. Who is going to give, our, give, give us the executive powers or uh, decisive powers of the others? So therefore the person he who is sympathizing one, one's own mistakes will develop the broad-mindedness, broad-mindedness to see others' mistakes. I am not telling the 
full fledged or full spectrum of emotions, but I am telling, try it in the small emotions or small uh, uncontrollable situations, little by little, that is the way you can broaden, broaden your mind and that works not only through this great wisdom, it works equally with the, uh, the great compassion. And reciprocally, each other, whenever you are contemplating within your mind, it appears like a wisdom, the great wisdom, it is not a, a superficial kind of wisdom. When it is working towards others or the external sasana, it becomes the, you know, the great wisdom. So that is how uh, the changing takes place at the grassroots level. I would say whenever someone is uh, meditating at this uh, chittanpasana level, one's likings and disliking will be changed or start to change and one's personality traits start to be sharp. The changes are going to take place. So therefore at that time one must not accelerate. It has to happen in a very slow manner or in a natural way and understanding day by day these refinements are happening. So keep on practicing Kayapasara. Contemplate on your body as regularly as possible, sitting meditation, walking meditation. And whenever the pressure and pain feelings happen, be aware of it. And when and where possible, when the mind becomes unruly, when the mind becomes obedient, see them as the mental states. The moment you understand it, you are understanding the human mind. So slowly, slowly, you can sympathize other mistakes and you can really uh, develop sympathy, joy whenever the other people achieving something, which is of the jealousy. So that is how uh, mind becomes broader and mind becomes uh, universal, mind becomes uplifted, mind becomes cultured and mind becomes uh, spiritual. So, in a, in a sense, you are actively take time or programming yourself to give enough walking meditation and sitting meditation, contemplate on the inward and outward. When and where are possible, you try to understand how the pleasurable feeling arises and the desire comes. Whenever the unpleasurable situation, mental states happen, see the undermining tendency of the hatred. So these things you may do, but while it is doing, this mental state will be something happening within you. Not rather do it. You can't do it because our the perverted mind is going to take up a hand. So therefore you have to let it happen. Give the full maximum facilities by giving the conditional conditions and these things going to happen. And, uh, and there also it is uh, one has to see the importance of association of good friends or, or noble friends, those who have already accustomed this kind of thing, then you will find that you are not cornered, you are not the only person in the world practicing this or you know think that you are lunatic, you will see other people also doing it, they are reaping their benefits and you feel the fellowship, you feel the, the co-practitioners and companionship and the Buddha says it is very, very crucial at that level, specifically when you are training towards the mental aspect. And the, uh, the last one is the Buddha says when you are continuing, at the time you feel that mind is completely free. In the sense it is happening completely according to the uh, nature of the law. That's what Taoism in the Mahayana tradition and in the, the Theravada text it is called tathata, it's called suchness. Mind become its own accord. That is unmanipulated mind or un the manifested, uh, unsteered uh, mind. The mind knows very well where are he, where am I and what is happening. Full alertness is there that there is no motivation. There is no volition. There is no will rather than the observation. That is what is called insight 
the vipassana has been translated as insight, you are observing vigilantly in what is happening. In, uh, I don't know, in Germany it may not be not be a good example, but in, in Sri Lanka, and when I was in UK, I used this example, uh, when cricket is going on, there are two umpires, the main umpire and the leg umpire, and until recent time, everyone contented with these two umpires. A lot of complaints going to start. And then one of the Sri Lankan suggests about the third umpire, that is the television camera. And my brother, my brother suggested. My brother suggested. And uh, mind the the also. <coughs> and then now each and every match is going on, if it is an international match, there are television cameras happening. Camera is doing only an observation and sorting out all the international cricket problems. Because the umpire is having the human error. Anyone can protest. But mere observation, just a television camera, ultimately you can put actually play slow motion and see what happens. If you have the mindfulness, it is the television camera, then you can go for action, replay and slow motion and you can ask whether I am I involved there emotionally, voli- volitionally, with will or motivation, anything. If there is no such involvement, Buddha will come and safeguard you. You have not accumulated any any any, any cases. So that is the pair. Vibhutta Mahachitta means so I emotionally not get involved. No motivation and involved, no will, but fully wide open observation. So it is very difficult to understand through this rational mind, because rational mind thinks that is something passive, that is something um, not human, so therefore are we going to become robots? But the challenge is impossible, you do and see. As far as you are there, you can't do it. As far as I is there, you can't do it. As far as the ego is there, you can't do it. As far as conceit is there, you can't do it. As far as the desire is there, you can't do it. Otherwise, that is what happened, that is what happened in the children's mind. No observation without intention. So for that, not easy to go directly into that. You have to go through the kind of Pasana, Vedana Pasana, Chittana Pasana level. And therefore, you must not underestimate the early parts of that the beginner's mind, each time your practical, active contribution is towards the Kayana Pasana and maybe something towards the Vedana Pasana, once it comes to come tuned, once it's aligned, when the least fictional part gets aligned with, the Chittana Pasana will take place and only thing is you must not disturb it, you must not add turmoil into that by your individual knowledge. Your Rationalization, let the mind to unreveal, let the mind to unwind and come up to the natural vibration and then that is the way you see Dharma, that is the way you see to Buddha. Buddha says, whenever you see Dharma, you will see me, otherwise not. So therefore Buddha is waiting inside, but we try to be smart, we try to accelerate, we try to uh, develop the, catch the momentum and that is the way you miss the bus. So at the Chittana Vasana level, you just let things happen and see how can I observe vividly with fully open mind but without any decision. That may be the why people sometimes say at that time what is happening is uh, even the suspended attention but suspended decision. You never rush to a decision. Let the thing happen because you are not understanding your own individual mind, you are understanding the universal mind through your mind, so therefore you consider your mind as a precious thing. It is giving raw materials for you to experiment with, but don't neglect it. Don't be uh, unmindful, don't be uh, negligent, be aware, make your each and every chance because our mind is often colored often colored with uh, desire or hate or ignorance or contracted. So each and everything is equal value, equal raw material for this noble quest. So being, uh, the, having developed 
kind of person away, the other person away, when you come up to that level, the simple way is to put it, uh, whenever you are open to Chittanupasana, you are just like observing a daily drama. You are the actor, you are the editor, you are the observer, everything is within you. From so morning to evening you can observe how and what happens in this moment. And therefore people see in this moment is very boring, very monotonous and very fearful kind of thing. But when you come up to the top class meditation, it becomes so vivid, so colorful and uh, you can see being in one single place, you can understand the whole world, you can understand the whole human mind and that is the moment one can say uh, really living, not cheating yourself, not uh, other directed, not uh, sleeping, not dreaming, you can live. So that is the point that uh, the the mind becomes prabuddha, that is awakened, and that is the way, uh, the easiest way to understand the nature of the Buddha mind. How is the mind of an arahant? How is the mind of the Buddha? The, uh, to the amount that you become completely uh, insightful, or observant in, inwardly, and without passing judgment, and reaction, and un- unassuming way. Uh, it is endlessly you become rejuvenated. Again and again you become rejuvenated, otherwise in the serenity. Otherwise you become all day and faculties will be very weak and weird off, but if you keep this vigilance, uh, it is ever like a battery getting recharged in a running car. If the car is running, battery is naturally getting charged. Likewise in the meditation, you don't know where that energy comes from. So everlasting energy source is going to start and every time you are full vigilant, full diligent, continue, but not yesterday and tomorrow, not others, not other places, your attention is just here and now. So when you come up to the higher level of Satipatthana, uh, this calibration, coming to the present time, here and now, uh, have a bigger meaning as well as the very electric and dynamic uh, results also. So, uh, if someone wish to go to that kind of high potential kind of meditation, one has to take care about the early parts, that is to say, kind of Pasana, Vedana Pasana. So, I think enough for the day. Thank you very much for this.